10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. Yes, again, no need to be wrong. We're on course according to this map, Dodo. Well, of course, of course we're on course. Well, where is everybody, then? Well, I don't know. They're probably sleeping off their Christmas pudding. Fast asleep. Hang on, I'll wake them up. Oh, oh. Tell you what, I've got an idea. Let's sing. Oh, he's got an even better idea. Let's sing a song. Oh. <laughs> All right, Boff, you go that way, I'll go this. Right. We hope you have a better Roasting in the oven, nuts and dates and Christmas pudding. Lots of hot mince pies to make. Don't forget the Christmas cake. We hope you have a very, very, very Christmas. We hope you have the best one yet. We hope you have a very, very, very Christmas that I shall never ever forget. Oh, lots of lovely decorations, lots of secret preparations, things you're not supposed to see. everybody, the special Sunday Gang show is about to begin. We hope you have a very, very, very Christmas. We hope you have the best one yet. We hope you have a very, very, very Christmas. The kind you'll never, ever forget. The kind you'll never, ever forget. Me, 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 me. Hello. Hello. Uh, excuse me, could you tell me the way to go to oh, find... Could, could I give you my autograph? Pardon? An, or an article of clothing, perhaps, as worn by myself during my more stunning performances. Well, thank you very much, but actually I was just looking for Sunday Gang. Oh, but are you not one of my breathless fans? Well, no, I don't think so. But have you no idea who I am, Lassie? Well, I'm sorry I don't. Oh, but, but I'm famous. You'll see my name everywhere. Everywhere? Oh, I can see. I'm going to have to put you out of your suspense. I'm Macintosh Mouse. Macintosh? Oh, as in raincoat. Mm, but, but don't let a celebrity like me go to your head, lassie. You, well, you, know, you just better get on with your cleaning out the room and polishing the floor or whatever else you came to do. I'd not like to keep you from your work. Listen, I'm not the lady that cleans the room. You're not? No. Oh, but the face is familiar. Well, I'm Dana. No, no, not Dana the star, the singer, the... Oh, let me have your autograph. Oh, I think I've got one in my pocket. Just a minute. Oh, yeah, there you are. Oh. Now, well, look, I, I think I'd better head off and try and see the others, all right? Oh, oh, wait, hey, wait a minute, lassie. I haven't told you, told you about my Irish joke. Mm. Have you heard the one about the Irish jellyfish? No. <laughs> it's set. Oh! <laughs> Hello, Donna. Hi, John. I'm sorry, I didn't realise you were being entertained in here. Well, I wouldn't go so far as to say that. <laughs> oh, oh, typical. Oh, gonna tell a good joke when she hears one. Do you know, I find oh, if you ignore him for long enough, cleaning. well, he soon goes quiet and goes to sleep. Star. He anyway. does. <laughs> anyway, I think the best thing we can do is start the show. Right. Right, Dodo. Right, JD. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and, uh, mouse. Sazanak! <laughs> It's a Sunday Gang Christmas special! We wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. The tidings we bring to you from our King, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Great, now then, what 
comes first on the show? Ah, surprise. Surprise? Ah, yes. Well, remember last year when you went to see where, where Jesus was born? Oh, yes. Well, we thought it'd be a good idea if everybody here and, and Ali and Donna were to see it again, because it is a real story. Oh, yeah. You'd like to start the programme with a film show, wouldn't you? Yeah! Hey, oh, I see. Play that smashing Abel Boff we haven't got the film. Ah, yes, we have, because I have brought the animator story later, complete with a map. So whenever you want to start JD, just turn the handle. Well, to find out about the first Christmas, I started my journey by plane and flew over 3,184 miles across France, Germany, Yugoslavia, Greece, then over the Mediterranean Sea until I landed at Tel Aviv Airport in the state of Israel. I've come all this way to find out where a baby was born 2,000 years ago. But first I'm going to see where the baby's parents lived. Now they weren't rich or famous, and the village they came from wasn't large or very compact. But from here, it's another 45 miles by bus. First I travel northwards across the flat coastal plain, then inland and up into the hills of southern Galilee. After a two-hour journey, I got my first sight of the town of Nazareth. This is where Mary and Joseph lived, although in their day it was just a small village nestling in the valley bottom. The houses would have been grouped round the village well, and today you can still see the spring that fed it. It's inside the Greek church of the Annunciation. Mary would have come to the well each day with the other village girls to draw fresh drinking water, just as you can still draw it today. It may have been here that Mary first told her friend she was going to marry Joseph the carpenter, and it was not long after that she first heard she was to have a baby. One day, somewhere here in Nazareth, when Mary was quite alone, an angel suddenly appeared to her and told her that she had been chosen to do God's work. Here's how St. Luke described it to us. Don't be afraid, Mary, said the angel. For God has been kind to you. You will conceive and give birth to a son. Mary was astonished. How can this be, she asked, for I am not yet married. The angel explained, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, Mary, and the holy child to be born will be called the Son of God. Then Mary began to understand, and she said quietly, I am the Lord's servant. As you have spoken, so let it be. But when Mary told Joseph, he didn't understand. He knew the baby was not his own, so he decided to call off the wedding. Then it was his turn to be visited by the angel. He was told in his dreams that he should still marry Mary and not feel ashamed of her, for the child had been sent by God. Then came some bad news. Here in the old village street market, the people of Nazareth first heard of the census ordered by the Roman Emperor Augustus. He wanted to get an accurate record of how many people lived in his empire. But when Mary and Joseph learnt the details of how the count was to be taken, they realised it would mean trouble for both of them and the unborn baby. Joseph was not a man of Nazareth himself. His family were descended from David and came from further south in Judea. Now the Roman decree said that every man must register for the census in his hometown and must take his family with him. This had to be done by a certain date. And that date was dangerously near the time when Mary was expecting her child. It was a difficult decision for the newly married couple. It meant travelling over 80 miles across rough mountainous country, and it was a lonely route to follow. Although Joseph's ancestors had come from Judea, he knew no one who lived there now, so he'd no idea where they were going to stay when they got there. 
Altogether, it would have taken them three days and nights to cross the hill country of Samaria. And then they'd have passed near where Mary's cousin Elizabeth lived, the tiny village at En Kerem. Elizabeth was also expecting a baby, which had been announced to her by an angel. The baby's name was to be John, and when he grew up, he was to prepare the way for Jesus' teaching. Well, that church over there marks the spot where John was born. Mary and Joseph still had five miles to go over the hills to Bethlehem. I decided to walk this last stretch too, up the narrow valley track that climbs southwards out of Enkerim. Perhaps Joseph borrowed a donkey so Mary could ride, but by now both of them would be worrying at every step because the baby was almost due. Before long, they'd see the great city of Jerusalem only a few miles away to the east. And then at last, ahead of them on the next hilltop was the town of Bethlehem. Their long and difficult journey was over. But their problems weren't, because the whole town was packed with people who'd also come to register for the census. In the old village square, every room was taken, every inn was full. And whilst Joseph went off to search, Mary knew her baby could be born at any moment. Joseph had to find somewhere, anywhere for Mary to lie down, some place where their child could be delivered safely. Well, the place he eventually found was on this hillside. Somewhere near here was the inn that had no room. It was here that Jesus was born. If you've ever visited the site of an ancient building, you'll know that the oldest remains are always the deepest down. As the centuries have passed, other buildings have been put on top. That's why I had to go down into the crypt underneath the Church of the Nativity to see the cave where the manger lay and the silver star that marks the birthplace. So, how far is it to Bethlehem? Well, when you get here, the miles don't seem to matter. You just feel part of something that you've read many, many times before. And Mary gave birth to a son, her first son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. It was a star in the sky that brought the local shepherds to welcome the new baby. They left their sheep not knowing why or where they were going. But when they saw Jesus, they knew what the angels had told them was true. This had been the most important journey of their lives. Tree. 